estimating a statistical model isn't much more than a button press but what we're going to do is see what it's actually doing and what files it produces before we even get to looking at all the different statistical results. Are ready to run the statistics to see if we can find anything uh, in our data? To do that we click on the estimate button, uh, batch editor comes up, we have to select which SPM mat to use, obviously it's the one we just specified, and let's just run it and see what happens. Quite a good idea actually to bring up the MATLAB window in the background here because that tells you what it's doing. Um, it's going to take a few moments to do because we've got, uh, well we've specified uh, four regressors um, for uh, the study and we've got five participants so it's got to apply that uh, model to quite a lot of data. So it's going to take um, a, a few moments and at the end of it we'll get that disappointing feeling because it doesn't actually show us anything. Okay, so the model estimation is now done. Let's take a quick look at what that's actually produced. It's produced no output, but if we go back to um, the folder where we did our group stats, previously we just had an spm.mat file, now we've got all these beta images and something called mask, something called res-ms, and something called rpv. So the, these beta images are, are, the, are the betas, the best fit for each of the regressors. We've got a lot of regressors because we've got four conditions for each of five participants, plus there's also a constant that's uh, modeled. And the mask is what parts of the image were actually included in the analysis. These are images, so we can look at them if we want to. We can click on display and go into our group stats. We could look at, say, a beta image. And this in and of itself doesn't necessarily tell us all that much because the beta image is just the size of the best fit. It doesn't tell us anything about the variance in the data at a point. If it's random, the best fit is usually a, a, a zero, um, as we may have here. And clicking to a larger value doesn't necessarily mean we've got anything interesting um, going on. Um, but it's interesting to see um, what we've actually uh, got going on. Also important to note this thing which SPM did without telling us, and that was to create a mask. What we said is that it looks at the time course of every voxel. It only looks at the time course of every voxel in the brain. Anything in the black area here was not included in the analysis. Um, obviously, it would be a completely pointless waste of time. It would take a huge amount of extra time, and it would be looking at non-brain areas. We even we are looking at areas which aren't very aren't very brainish or interesting. But whole brain analysis is crudely whole brain automatically masked off so we only look at these voxels. Also be a little bit embarrassing if you found some statistically significant result out there in space. Uh, and other, other uh, uh, things here are to do with the uh, residuals and measures of the smoothness of the image used in calculating um, the statistical thresholding. That's a brief overview of what is produced when the statistical model is estimated, but what you really want to do is see what the results look like, so let's move quickly on to video number nine.